Hey everybody, it's David Sparks uh, from The Automators here, and we are talking about project planning in episode 5, so I thought I'd share with you one of my project planning scripts that I use. Uh, this is done through Series Shortcuts, which is releasing uh, just a few weeks after this episode airs, so I'm going to focus on Series Shortcuts for it. I go through the whole process of doing uh, uh, building out these scripts in much greater detail in the OmniFocus Video Field Guide. Version 3 is in process as I record this, and it will be out uh, within a month. So I'd recommend just waiting for that. If you want to get the real detailed stuff on that, you can learn about that over at learn.maxsparky.com. Anyway, uh, this is a script. So I've written it uh, with this task paper format we talked about in episode 5. Uh, I'm doing this in Ulysses, which is a text editor. It works great on the iPad, the Mac, and the iPhone. I've got it on the Mac just for the screencast here. And you can see uh, the code, which I explained in greater detail in the screen in the um, uh, OmniFocus field guide. But either way, uh, I'm using all caps for variable names in this just text version of it. So I'll have a variable for the episode, a variable for the subject of the show, and a, show, a variable for the record date, and a variable for the publish date. So those are the four pieces of data I get, and then using that I go through and build things out. This at parallel false designator makes it a sequential project, which is what you do when you're planning a podcast. Um, next I've got the um, calendaring the automator's episode, and once again you see the variable on the subject, for recording on the record date, and the context for that is tech, uh, those will change to tags, uh, and that's going to be covered in the new OmniFocus field guide. This is kind of legacy because now OmniFocus supports uh, not just contexts but tags. And then, uh, then I have prepare the first pass at the outline, once again in the context of tech. Um, split the episode ad spots with Katie. Actually, this is for Rosemary. You can tell I got this from um, the uh, I got this from the Mac Power Users one I created years ago. And again, I have con uh, context for that. And I also have a due date on that. And the due date is the record date, which we're going to make as a variable, minus two days. So two days after, I'm sorry, two days before we record the show, I get a due reminder in OmniFocus that I need to split up the ad spots if there's any to, to cover. Then I want to record the ad spots. Once again, those are due two days before. Um, next, I finalize the episode outline. That's due one day before. I make the initial run of the show notes. That's due one day before. So all this is pre-production stuff I'm doing as I plan a show out. Uh, then we record the episode. That's the big one. And that gets flagged, at flagged, you see there. And that shows up as a flag in OmniFocus. Then we add additional links from the show recording to the episode that happens afterwards. So that's record date plus one day. And then uh, we want to bookmark the episode for... Uh, the audio. So if you're listening to it in a podcaster that supports bookmarks, you see them. And that's due two days before the publish date of the show. So whatever we designate the show is going to publish at least two days before, I'm starting, I'm starting to get flags and do uh, reminders for that. Um, upload the bookmarked audio file, uh, which we do to the server before it goes out. That's due one day before. And then we post the episode, and that's due on the publish day. So you see due, at due, publish, um, and I also defer that one, so I defer it until a published date, so it doesn't show up in OmniFocus until a day it's due, and then it is due that day. And I also flag it just because I'm anal retentive. Finally, we prepare a blog post concerning the Automator's episode on the subject, which is due at least one day after, and I tweet it out, which I also put a due date on. So uh, even though I swear you're not supposed to use a lot of due dates, I do use a lot of due dates in respect to podcasts because... A lot, a lot of this stuff is time sensitive. We want to make sure we get the show published right. So what I would do is take all that text and I would copy it. Now, I don't write this stuff in Siri Shortcuts because the text box in Siri Shortcuts is kind of bad. It's small and it's hard to read and it doesn't give you a lot of room. So I, I write these elsewhere. Uh, Rosemary does it a little differently. She talked about it in the episode. But for now, I'm going to switch over to the iPad and show you this script installed into Siri Shortcuts and run it. Okay, now I'm back over on the iPad, and you can see I've got these purple segment of scripts. These are all OmniFocus scripts that I use to kick off various projects in my life, and one of them is this Automator's Content Show. 
And if I go through it, just to kind of give you an explanation, the first thing I do is request data with these. There's the episode number, which returns a number when you run it, and then you can set that as a variables episode. Now that second step isn't necessary. You could use magic variables. Uh, I just wrote this a long time ago before magic variables existed. Uh, we will cover this uh, magic variables on a future episode, so we can talk about that more then, but for now I'll leave it as is. Uh, also, it's I think a little more explanatory when you see the variable being declared. Uh, so the next one is ask for input. Uh, what is the subject of the show? And it returns text. And that gets saved as a variable called subject. Next, we look at what is the recording date. And that returns a date. And then we simplify the date format to a short format. This is a step. And, um, and we set that variable to the record variable. And then we do the same thing for the publishing date. What's the publishing date? Return a date. Simplify it to the short method and then save it as a variable called publish. And then we get to this text field, and this is why you can see I do this stuff generally in Ulysses, because the text field is kind of small and hard to work in. But what I've done is copied and pasted the Ulysses text we were looking at a minute ago and replaced each of the capitalized terms with these variables. If I just select any word in here, you can see I've got variables stretched across the bottom of the screen. Um, just a quick uh, thing on magic variables, if I tap the little magic icon button, I can go and pull a variable out of any one of these steps, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to make it more confusing. Uh, so it goes through and it applies all that language we just created in Ulysses and inserts the various variable names that we've just collected uh, through the input. Then it goes into OmniFocus and saves that to a folder in OmniFocus I have called Automators. And finally, it creates a new event. So it goes to the calendar and adds an event for the Automators episode on the subject date. I've talked in the show about how I like to combine automation. This is a great example. I've already collected a bunch of data about this episode, so I might as well go ahead and create the calendar event automatically as well. So once we're done, we can see it in action. I'm just going to tap on the Automators Content Show button. Then it's going to ask me for the episode number. It's episode 5. Click OK, and the subject of it is Project Automation. And the uh, recording date, let's say it's going to be in two days on August, on September 2nd. And the publish date, let's say that's going to be on September 7th. Click OK. It's going to jump into OmniFocus, create that project, and it created the calendar event, and it's all done now. So let's go see that. I'm going to tap over to OmniFocus, and you can see in the automators, I have this whole project that's created with these relative due dates. Like because we're recording in a couple of days, it's already giving me due dates for that um, early preparation stuff, like doing the ad spots and preparing the outline. And all this stuff is relative to the dates I typed in. Uh, sending out the tweet, I said I'd publish the show on the 7th, so the tweets are going to be due on September 8th. So it's all done. If I go into my calendar, I've got calendar events for it as well. Uh, taking a little time to set these up, and once you set one up, you can duplicate it and use it over and over again with minor adjustments, really saves you a lot of time. I've automated so much of my project planning and my task management this way, it can really help you out.